Well, good morning, friend. It's early out, and uh, it's not real early, but it's cold out. It's so cold I'm wearing gloves. But this morning I had attack of a saint on me again, right, in my dreams last night. So I woke up and ran to dad as usual. But I'm going through this because with sometimes circumstances come up in our lives that bring us back to things that we have done and, and things like that. And I always want to talk about this stuff to you because God puts me through things so that I can talk to you about it. So that those of you that are like me, that have done things wrong in the past, that have these demons, meaning that when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the sins that I've done and the guilt they caused, right? And then my thought of Satan, which is my adversarial thought, will use that against me. So when something comes up into my life, quite often Satan will use the old thoughts against me if he can, but he can't because I have forgiveness in Christ and I am now seeking the Father through the Son, right? And so therefore, even though these things come up, and sometimes it's God that puts them in my life because he knows I'm going to talk about it and I always hope that my experience can help some of you that are prodigal children like me, right? That have done things that you regretted and you, you, were, you treated people less because you thought you were more and you were actually pretending you were more because you really felt less, right? That, that was me, right? So I used to try to control, when I felt out of control, I'd try to control other people and then I'd find myself in situations that I would regret because that never works, right? God is in control. I have no control. And my thought of Satan is going to try to get me to think I have control. It's a liar and a thief. It was in the beginning and it will be in the end. But so I've been in a situation where um, dealing with someone from my past and I love that person. They're a child of God, right? And it's not that I have anything bad against them. Like I said, everything that I went through, most of it, I put myself in the situation and I either have a choice of realizing that God knew the end in the beginning and therefore it had a purpose or I don't. But I also have to recognize that God is now the biggest priority in my life and it, it's the Holy Spirit that dwells in me that brings me this peace, love, and joy that I have. And so... <clears throat> But sometimes when I'm trying to help people from the past, which I don't do very often because a prophet is only without honor in his own hometown, right? So I can't really save the, the, those folks that, that knew me before because they will see me one way and now I'm another. And I will see them one way and know they're another. So it doesn't matter. But we get attached to what other people are by our previous experience of who they were, right? And so I sometimes don't know what to do and I have to trust God to do it for me. And that is to give me the wisdom through the Holy Spirit to make the right choices in my life. Because I want everybody to receive the kingdom I have, but I know that I can't give it to anyone, that they have to choose it for themselves you can hear what I'm saying and then go read what Jesus said and see if that's what Jesus said. Because I'm telling you, friend, that I can't save anybody and I can't be, I, no one can give me the relationship with God and I can't give it to anyone else. I can testify to you about my experience. I've told you a lot of crazy stuff on here. People don't believe necessarily. Like, <clears throat> I do believe that I ended up in the lifestyle I did not by accident. I've told you I'm the spirit of Judas, right? And that I betrayed the Lord. Now, I didn't do it intentionally because it was Jesus that sopped his blood onto his body, you know, bread and wine, and he handed it to Judas and it said Satan entered into him. So Satan entered into Judas because he wasn't there and my father had to 
put all the blame on Judas so that he didn't blame the Jewish people for what they did, right? Because they said, let their blood be put on, let his blood be put on our head. And therefore, my father would have had to judge them by the law. So Jesus and Judas created Yom Kippur. And therefore, Jesus put all the dead on Judas so that he didn't have to judge the Jewish people and make uh, my father break his commitment to Abraham, right? So there's a lot going on. But in this lifetime, I was dipped in the blood of the church and cast into hell. And I'm not going to go into great detail about that. But they taught me that all these things about people were evil. And so what they didn't know was that I was one of those people they were calling evil. And so because they were calling other people evil, as a little kid, I thought I was evil. And so I went down a path and I never went back to the church. I've been to the church over the years to a lot of different churches. I thought, well, that one was wrong. Let's see if I can find the right one. But every time early on, because of the things I went through, I ended up with drug and alcohol problems. And I ended up um, seeking God through a 12-step program. And I used to take Jesus' words I had a red letter edition of the Bible and I'd take his words out into the woods and I would study Jesus because I was trying to believe in a God. They, the 12 step program told me I had to come to believe that a power greater than myself could restore myself to sanity, right? Well, I already knew that I was, I kind of at that point knew I was insane. Some of the behaviors I was exhibiting, I knew I was wrong. I was hurting people and I knew it. And when I drank, I couldn't help it. I just became something I didn't want to be, but the problem was because of all these thoughts of hate and fear and, and, and self-hatred, I could not drink. I had to drink in order to get rid of the pain because I wanted to kill myself on a pretty much daily basis, right? So I was trapped in this hell, and, but the problem was every drink just took me a further step to hell because when I would drink, I'd black out and then I'd do things I regretted to, and hurt people. And so I lived this life early on of a nightmare situation. So I know those of you that, that kind of grew up thinking you were righteous, you're not going to get me. You're not going to understand what I'm saying quite often. And I really don't care because I'm not really here for you. I'm here for those that are like me, that are sons of Satan, meaning sons of selfishness, that have cast themselves into hell in their mind because they have all these thoughts that they can't get past and all this guilt. I'm telling you, Christ died on the cross so that you may live. He not only overcame death, he died so that you may be forgiven your debts. I'm telling you, if you will believe in him and do the things he asked, he will bring you a kingdom so great you won't be able to explain it to anybody else. But I don't believe that any of that happened by mistake. I do believe that that was my, that was my hell for, for uh, betraying Christ. Even though I wasn't guilty of it because Satan was passed into me, I still had to pay the debt, right? And any of you that have never gone through what I've gone through, you will say hell is their friend. When I was a kid, I had loaded shotguns tucked in my mouth with my toe on the trigger. I used to cut myself, which would start off as suicide attempts. So those of you that are looking to stay out of hell there and, and receive the kingdom there, you're not going to get me. You're not going to understand a word I say because I'm here to tell you that I was in hell here and my father loosed my chains and set me free. That's what I'm here talking about. So few people are going to understand me that are righteous because they think they're something and I know they're nothing because my father is everything, right? Of myself, I am nothing. It is the father who doeth my works, not even the words I speak are on my behalf, but on behalf of the father who sent me. And I'm not upset that I had to pay a debt that I didn't know, even if I did, because if, if the Jews were Jesus's people and he was saving them, and I was Judas at the time, then I would have also been a Jew, and therefore I would have wanted to save my people too, right? And better that I pay my debt than the whole nation perish, right? That's the way I looked at it. 
So when he revealed this to me, because when he revealed it to me, I was like kind of stumped. I don't expect you to believe I'm the spirit of Judas, friend. That sounds absolutely crazy, but it makes sense to me. And it also is the reason that I have this kingdom now, because I understand why it is I went through what I went through. And Jesus told you the Father's justice fair. It is. You just don't see it. People don't see it because they don't understand the Bible, because they listen to the Pharisees that won't enter the kingdom and they won't let you enter either. Right in the church to Philadelphia, Jesus said, To he that overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will go out no more. Well, no more means not again. So the words of Christ told you that you've been leaving the kingdom. Now, that doesn't mean that you all go there and live wonderful. I don't know. I didn't. I've never. I've never. I don't. I can't tell you about that because I did, my father revealed himself to me in the beginning so that I would have the courage to say the things I say, because as you can see, most Christians think I'm insane because of the way I see things. But they say the father's just as fair when children are born into being molested and abused in these drug dens and stuff. Do you think there's any justice in that when you get born into a nice household that, that loved Jesus and and you got treated good and these people were treated horrible? No, of course not. So I'm supposed to do what Christ told me to do, and that's to help them, right? How are they going to ever get out of hell if I don't help them get out? So I'm here on this camera. If you're one of those folks that, that feel like you got the raw deal and you don't believe in God because you don't believe in Christianity, I'm never here talking about Christianity. I'm always here talking about my father and his firstborn son. They are the truth and the life. And you, I've given you a lot in a lot of different ways. But this situation this morning was, it caused me sexual dreams because of something I've been going through. And friend, a lot of the sins that we do feel good when we're doing them. Anybody that's had sex knows that it feels good, right? And it makes you, and if you're like me and you feel like you're out of control in your life, you can try to seek power through it. And that's what I used to do, right? So, but in the end, it doesn't make you feel good because it's not righteous. It's not of love. It's of selfishness. It's of Satan. And then my thought of Satan will come to me and use these demons, the guilt and sin, that I've done to try to condemn me. And if I don't turn my thoughts to God and get with, right with him, see, I'm not a person. I know that I ha have the Holy Spirit. My father talks to me all the time. And other people say that you can't talk to God. You can believe whatever you want, but I'm not calling Jesus a liar. He's the one who said, be glad I go to the father because I go to the father. The spirit of truth is going to come to you and even greater things will you be given. And he has, and I talk to him, and he talks to me. But I'm willing to die in order to live. I already had to trade my death for my life. If he ever needs it, he gets it. I don't know how to do it. He'll do it for me. Christ was sweating blood, said, Lord, don't make me drink from this cup, but nonetheless, your will be done. When my thought of Satan comes to me and brings up the fact that that I had to trade my life to get what I've got, and Satan starts hammering down on me, I just say, Lord, don't make me drink from this cup. But if you want me to, then your will, not mine, be done. Now, I don't have the courage to do that. Anybody that knows me from the past knows that I'm a coward. I've always been a coward. I was always seeking selfishness because I was trying to find something worth it, and I couldn't find anything worth anything because it was all about me instead of all about Christ, which is love. But then my father did something with me and he put me in a psychiatric hospital, which is where I needed to be because then I became this thing called a peer specialist and I became trained in mental health and I started helping other people out of hell. And it was the greatest joy I ever had. I love people, helping people, friend. It turns out love is the greatest thing ever and I can't explain that to you until you rise in the spirit of love. But if you rise in the spirit of the law, that is the spirit of love. 
So I'm telling you, it's joyous. And now you got to be careful when you're doing it because Jesus told you to spend a lot of time in your secret place. And that's how you make sure that you don't fall back to Satan, right? Because what happens is when, when we start doing good for others, we get tempted to, br to brag about it, to feel better and take the credit. And when we do that, Satan will cl make us climb the mountain of pride. And then when we get high enough up, his great joy is knocking us back off again, right? So anytime I'm thinking about taking the credit for what it is that I speak, I remember that there's this, this thought of Satan, my adversarial thought, and it's in the back of my head going, Jason, this is all you doing this, isn't it? And it's just waiting for me to take pride and, and glorify myself so that it can get me to climb the mountain of pride so it can knock me back off. Friend, any of you that have climbed the mountain of pride and fell off, you know how horrible it feels, right? So I don't want to go back up the mountain of pride. I want to stay humble. I want to be like that camel on his knees, except I, I don't even have anything, so I don't have to worry about that, right? My father stripped everything from me, and I love everything I don't have. Because that which possesses people is what they possess, and I possess nothing. And therefore, there's nothing for Satan to, to use against me except for my past, which has no meaning because I have repented. I have admitted I'm wrong and changed my mind and ask God to come into my life and change me, and he has. But there's still this thought, there's still these old demons that, the, that will come to me when something comes along and remind me of how much I enjoyed it, but it will forget to tell me the suffering that came with what I thought was joy, and that that suffering came from what I was calling joy. So I had this fleeting happiness, this fleeting joy, because I kept doing things that were not right. And now I know that I wasn't right. I admit to God that I wasn't right. And I let him use me in whatever way he wants, because the Father knows best in my life. So I don't know what to do. I never have. I never will except for at the moment I do. But if you look at Jesus, a lot of the things he did, people just completely miss out. And when I talk about, you know, where I'm the spirit of Judas returned, you realize that Jesus twice said that John the Baptist was the spirit of Elijah returned. The spirit, meaning the essence of Elijah. People are getting spirit wrong. But I don't care what you believe, that's up to you. I'm not here to use self-righteous folk that use that Bible to twist it up, to keep yourself in hell and not enter the kingdom and not, not let your, enter, your neighbor enter either. Well, you'll pay your debt at the end of the age. I am here upon my knees before my father and I speak for him because he speaks for me. And that is my purpose. That is why the spirit of Judas has returned to tell the truth of what the church has done so that those of you that want this kingdom will follow Christ and Christ alone. I'm telling you there's a far greater message than anybody's getting except for those that got it and it wasn't their job to become me. It's my job to be me. And I don't even know how to be me unless I let my father do it for me. And this morning after I got up and was getting in the spirit with God, I was sitting at my secret place and he told me that I was supposed to come out here. I, I had this vision of standing in this very spot on camera, and I knew I was supposed to go do it. So here I am on the camera testifying to you about that I'm still a man that's sinful in thought, and I have to put my thoughts before God so that he can take them from me. But he takes them from me and says, See, Jason, because you have this free will choice in your life, and you choose love over selfishness, you choose me over the world, well, I get to know love by experience because you have chosen me over selfishness. But you also get to know yourself by love because you are choosing to do the next loving thing, which is not to go act on your behaviors and put yourself in situations that are going to cause yourself and others suffering, right? So that's the way that works for me. But 
the temptation's always there. My thought of Satan never goes away. It's my adversarial thought. But I know it by its fruit, just like I know the thought of Christ in my head, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the thought of my Father. I know it by its fruit. And I know that if I choose wrongly, I'm going to suffer, cast myself back into hell, and then pay and keep paying debt. Why would I do that when I know now that, that I don't have to? So when I talk about, yes, is there a spiritual realm beyond this? Yes, there is. But for me to talk to you about that is not very helpful, is it? People take these demons and Satan and turn them into these big monsters, and they worship that monster because instead of following Christ, they're so afraid of Satan. I've listened to churches say, you can't talk to God because he'll come to you as the spirit of, uh, that Satan will come to you as an angel of light. That's because you don't know Christ inside out, upside down, and backwards. Christians still think they can kill and enter the kingdom. Christ told you you couldn't. If you put a few of his parables together in statements he made, you will hear him say that before John, the kingdom suffered violence and was taken by force. But after him, it wouldn't. He went as far as saying that those that were in the kingdom already were going to be thrown out and have to enter rightly. Now, you, I've given you at different videos how I got that statement to come together, but I didn't. The Holy Spirit put it together in my head. So I don't want to be cast from the kingdom I've been given. I'm in relationship with my Father through the Son, through the Holy Spirit, which is the voice of God, and therefore I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back to the suffering that I used to choose from myself. And this whole world is doing it, friend. We, have, we are sacrificing our children on the altar to our corporate gods. There's a debt for that. America's going down if it doesn't repent. I've been telling you that. That's the message I'm here to give. That is the reason the spirit of Judas has returned. I have come to tell you, repent or to pay your due. That's a fact. But I'm not trying to scare you with that. I want you to recognize that if you want this kingdom, now's the time. You choose it now because if you wait, it's going to be too late. And by the time you go get oil for your lamp, the door to the wedding is going to be closed. My father has given you a messenger. I'm him. I'm here telling you, get a red letter edition of the Bible and read what Jesus said and read because your preachers ain't your savior. Christ is. And he who abides in the son abides in the father. And he who welcomes the son welcomes the father also. But you have to make this choice, and it means getting to know him. Eat his flesh, which is his word. Drink his blood, which is his spirit. These are the facts of what Christ said. You either believe or you don't. Your, your Pharisees won't let you enter the kingdom, and they won't enter either. So they're going to pay a greater debt. So don't you follow religion. You, fo you can go gather with people of the spirit of love, of the spirit of Christ, but never think that they have the truth that's going to bring you the kingdom. Christ himself has it, and he's got it for you, my friend. So go get it. I'm telling you. And then my father will just show you things that are just crazy. And then you'll end up rejoicing all the time like I do. But I still get these thoughts. You know, I ha my adversarial thought is here to stay. I am divine in nature, friend. I am in the image and likeness of my Father. I have the right to choose between love and selfishness, between Satan and Christ, between the world and my Father. So, love, Christ, Father, selfishness, Satan, world, right? So I don't choose the world anymore. The world doesn't have anything I want, except for like these beautiful views. What my Father created is awesome. I love that, right? So my job is to forgive everyone for they know not what they do, seek my Father first, and I get to do it in all these wonderful places that I'm always showing you while I'm out seeking the kingdom. And, but that means I have to choose him over everything, including relationships. God is my relationship. Someday maybe he'll give me a Christ-like woman, but he told me I'm not even supposed to have one. He told me that I'm supposed to follow him so that I can speak the truth for him because any relationship that I try to put in front of God is going to be the one that takes me back to hell, right? And when we get in relationships, people want things from us. 
So I'm in relationship with the Father. Sure, do I want what everybody else wants? Absolutely. But I'm willing to sacrifice that in order to have what I have, and that is this kingdom, right? I'm not telling you what to do as far as your relationships go. I'm telling you that this is what my Father asks of me, not of you. But he's going to ask something of you. And you're going to have to decide whether you're going to put him first to the world. And then the choice you make is going to be the one you have. So if you want the kingdom, Jesus said the kingdom would not be said to be here or there, but the kingdom of God would be said to be within you. It is within me. I found it because I'm in relationship with my Father, just as Christ promised I would be if I would make the choice that he made, and he told me he would help me make it, and he did by getting to know him. So go get to know him, friend, and find this greater kingdom, all right? So just know I love you because my Father loves you, and may God bless you and yours.